Dr. Kareen Allen, international author, lecturer, researcher, and practitioner in natural health, nutrition, and neurodevelopmental education for over 30 years, is an expert on how to affect brain health, learning, and behavior problems without using drugs. She's a recognized healthcare leader for her natural and practical approach to health regarding natural and alternative methods of stimulating permanent changes in the brain for issues like ADD, autism, Asperger's, dyslexia, learning disabilities, academic and behavioral issues, and acute and chronic brain injuries. She has developed a brain program which facilitates the connection of neurological pathways for brain cells which have been injured, damaged, missing, or not properly working. Dr. Allen's brain research is applied in the Advanced Learning and Development Institute's brain programs. Through the Advanced Learning and Development Brain Camps, Dr. Allen's method of repairing the brain has helped many families find help, solutions, and hope for their brain problems. I'm going to share with you some of the keys to brain health and how you can um, help your brain. We have a center in Idaho where we bring people in whether they have a damaged brain from an accident or injury or from birth or autism or uh, any kind of problem with something an accident has happened to them. And we bring them in and we re-educate the brain cells to perform normal and proper uh, connections. And we're going to show you how we do this. We're going to show you the modalities that we use, and then we're going to show you one that you're all here for, um, and how we use the water, alkaline ionized water, to really um, be a foundation for the procedures and the modalities that we use to help people with extensive, um, from A to Z, issues with the brain. If you knew somebody, and I know that some people in here in this audience have people in their family, raise your hand if you know somebody or have somebody in your family with a brain issue. And it's affecting their life. Yes, it's everywhere. It's a very important thing. And where do you go for help? I have worked with this for over 30 years. I had a brain injured daughter, and um, she was very, very brain injured from birth. And there was nowhere to go. And at that time, I knew that. I knew there wasn't anywhere, and I had to find a way for her. And so I developed a lot of things that I used on my own child. And both of them today are functioning in not the normal level, but the above normal level. And they're in college and done with college. So. so where would you go if you were Chloe's parents? And Chloe had uncontrollable seizures, and there was no hope for her. All they could do is cut her brain out. So they took half of her brain out. Then they left her with cerebral palsy and paralysis on the right-hand side. Did she have any hope of a life? So they um, were looking for somewhere to bring their daughter. Then we had Jeannie. Jeannie was a twin, and from young age on, she had lots of issues with anxiety and fear and depression and of late, she was very suicidal. She ended up shutting herself in her room and never would come out. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't dress herself. Very educated woman. The family was frantic. Can you imagine? What would you do if that was your daughter? And you had no way to help her. And then we had little Elsa, whose dear parents struggle like autistic um, parents of autistic children do. Never say, I love you. Never able to respond to a hug. No proper speech and the behavior is out of control. They don't obey, they don't eat. Her stomach was always hurting, severe digestive issues and severe delayed issues. Then we had Jason who'd been through life, he's already in his 30s, and had seizures. And his seizures compounded the brain injury because every time he'd have, not every time, but many times when he had a seizure, he would fall over and hit his head severely again. In that whole process, he had delayed social development he was very slow in responding in his speech. And it, he could get it, but he couldn't get it out. And so people were tagging him as being having some mental problems. But he was smart enough and aware enough to know he wasn't. And he didn't know where to go. His life was a mess, didn't know where to come together. Then there was Yvette. What would you do if you were her parents? At three and a half, she had a very serious traumatic injury. She actually died. The parents prayed over her, brought her back to life. She was totally vegetable. 
They worked with alternative developmental therapies until now, at 15, they brought her to our center. She still had developmental delays. She had no balance. She couldn't do much of standing on one foot or standing on a trampoline. She had a severe optic nerve uh, problem. They said it could never be regenerated and she could never see out of that right eye. And her balance and motor uh, functions were very delayed. Then, what if you had a Down syndrome child? People kind of think that when they get past a certain age, you can't do much with them. Bethany's in her 20s, and Matt is about 15, and they came to our program. Their parents brought them there because they had social delays, speech delays, and behavior issues that were presenting themselves. And they were looking for something to help these children. So how would you permanently, and I mean permanently, and effectively stimulate the brain and when you stimulate the brain with a permanent fix, you are going to change lives. These are the modalities that we use in our program. We won't explain them in detail. We do have a resource packet available that explains on a, a CD how these modalities work in detail. You can get those afterwards. But light, sound, and motion, very powerful modality. The bed moves, they're looking at a special frequency of light programmed especially for their brain, and they're hearing an auditory program. Then we have color therapy that we use, and the kids love it, and we can see behavior changes and uh, emotional changes and other changes almost immediately upon putting the right color on them. A lot of people don't realize that when you have injury in the brain, you have to not always, but a lot of times, go back to the very beginning of development. And where do we develop? In creeping and crawling is where we get our basics for life, for our emotional life, for our ability to function in life. And so when these people aren't functioning well emotionally, physically, socially, whatever, we take them back to the rudimentary roots. And part of that can be creeping and crawling. We do a special essential oil massage for them, and they love it. It's, it's just uh, wonderful for them. We have a very... Um, wonderful way to do it with the essential oils. And then we have detox. One of the detox methods we used is called a foot bath, and they also look forward to this. And we always put the parents in with the um, participant, or a lot of times we have adults too, but we want the parents to experience as much as they can along with the participant. Then we do certain patterns that actually reconnect pathways in the brain permanently, and there are hundreds of them that we put them through, and we teach the parents to do these. They can continue them at home, put them in certain movements, and I have literally seen a one cerebral palsy young man totally bent over, totally in half when he came. He didn't have normal bowel movements. He couldn't, he was always in a um, U position. Within one or two days, we had him erect. He then began to have his bowel moves. It was because of the reflexes. It was amazing to watch that happen. Um, we use hyperbaric oxygen. Not everybody wants to do it, but some do, and we let them do it. We do a gluten and dairy-free diet. This is very important for the brain. I don't know that um, a lot of people don't know this. We grow wheat, and the seed in all the wheat farmers is soaked with mercury in the fungicide. And even though I grow organic wheat, I don't put anything on it afterwards, there is still resonances energetically of mercury in the wheat. And the wheat that is grown by my neighbors is then they put more fungicides with mercury base on it. So mercury, of course, is a very key problem for the brain and causes severe neurological damage. So we find that putting them on a gluten-free diet, dairy-free diet, really helps them to detoxify and to cleanse and to really feel better. We do movement therapies, um, lots of balance things, lots of things in movement. And we, we have always done prayer, but this year we added a specific uh, standalone prayer counselor. She is a very gifted woman, and you know how sometimes people just, religion, I don't, I don't really want to go there, and this woman is the most unreligious, unpretentious woman, and after they saw how their traumas were being healed, their emotions were being, their rejection, fear, and abandonment, so much of the emotions that people are dealing with, as you, if you have a brain injured child, you know the traumas. And they would go in with her and spend an hour, half hour, and for the parents, we want help for the parents because they're so traumatized with these children. And they came out of there with such healing and such um, refreshment in their spirits that by the middle of the program, there was lineup to get in to see her in the day, and she wouldn't have time in the day to see everybody, so they had to wait. But she was quite an addition.
We do a lot of trampoline, and people don't realize how important trampoline is. My goodness, we have them doing um, letters and sounds and words, and try moving your hands in one direction and your feet in another. And here I'm teaching this pretty um, severe autistic young man to move his hands, and I'm encoding it into the brain, and then he got it, and he's off on his own, doing it on the right-hand side there, jumping and moving, and he made such tremendous changes. It was really remarkable to see because new pathways had been made when he went back to school that year. He was doing a whole lot better in reading, socialization, and just where he was at. And one other modality that we use that we're going to spend a little time developing here is our alkaline ionized microclustered hexagonal water. And we put the water out for them and we encourage them to drink it all day long, and they do. And they are seeing the results of that. Why do we find that alkaline ionized water is so important for the brain. Well, you can see the brain is 80% water. And if that brain does not have hydration and it doesn't have a way to get that water to it, then it um, is less of what we can produce in results in the brain. So let's look at the areas of why we chose micro clustered alkaline ionized water to facilitate the other modalities that we're using to reconnect brain circuits. One of the reasons is we wanted better hydration. Another one is we needed energy. Some of these people come to us, they've never been off the couch, they, they can't walk a block. And we had to move them and we couldn't physically do all their movement, they had to help us, so we needed to have something to give them energy. We had to help them with digestion. We didn't want people getting um, upset stomachs and, and the digestive problems that they came with. Uh, we wanted to support that. We do a lot of detox. You're going to see in a minute how we use detox because when people are exposed to fungicides, pesticides, neurotoxins, they got to come out. And toxic metals, we got to detoxify it. Inflammation control, we needed something for that. Free radical scavenging, oxygenation, acidosis correction and DNA support of repairing it. So the first thing, important reason why we wanted hydration in our brain program and use this alkaline water is because movement therapy per research requires hydration to the brain. You've got to. Hydration will enhance the performance. Alkaline ionized water's first hydration and fast hydration will allow the participants to be able to go and drink and go right back into a rigorous activity, such as jumping up and down. Would you even dare think of doing that? And we make them drink a 12-ounce glass of water and then go jump on the trampoline. They would be slushing and hurting and getting a side ache. But this water hydrates immediately, and they are able to go with full energy. When they've just pooped out, they can go another round. Another reason we use it is for the energy. Alkaline ionized water increases oxygen, which increases cellular energy. Six hours of brain therapy takes a lot of energy. We had uh, one program this last summer where we had, um, I call it the geriatric group. We had people with aneurysms. We had people with accidents from falling off a horse. They were all past, not all, but a number of them, four or five of them were past 50, a number of strokes. And um, these people didn't come with a lot of energy. So we were able to help them get through all the modalities of jumping and movement therapies that we do because we were feeding them alkaline water. Now, the other factor is you need water that gets into the system to help digest your food. And alkaline water, ionized water, gets into the digestive system, into the body, into the cells immediately. Whereas it'll take the stomach three to four hours to make tap water or bottled water or such bioavailable. But the alkaline water helps our nutrients to become available to the cells quicker and easily absorbed. We give them a, a few supplements that are brain targeted during the program, and they don't have to take handfuls of supplements like sometimes people do for the brain because the water helps to get it into the cells deeper and faster. And then, of course, water is a very important factor in enzymatic processes that break down toxic compounds. We all know this, you're getting the flu or you're getting feeling yucky and what, is, what does the doctor tell you to do? Drink lots of fluids. But if we have the best fluid available, alkaline ionized water, we're going to do a better job of flushing that out of the system. And then water is important in the final stages, if, we, if we're flushing it into the tissues, 
we need to be lubricating the intestines and providing the basis of urine. We want it to flush out of the body. Then we move further into the detoxification and elimination. And when we have water that's flushing and getting into the system and hydrating, we're going to have a cleaner stool. And that is research says within days after taking the ionized water on a regular basis, that will happen. And then research also tells us that because the water gets into the system, it can detoxify lactic acid. Now, when you're moving muscles and parts of the body like crawling, you see these people on the floor crawling and they're adults or they're children that have not really crawled ever and don't know how to crawl or creep, they're going to have sore muscles. We ne I never hear the complaint of sore muscles because they're flushing with the water. Ionized water molecule is half the size and so it can penetrate easily into the cellular membranes of the body. And ionization speeds up new tissue building and waste removal. So it's a very important part of our detoxification. Now, alkaline, ionized, microclustered water aids in the detoxification. When the urine is alkalized, there's an increase of excretion. A lot of our people come, they're, on, they're doing, having seizures, they're on a lot of drugs for things. Um, a lot of anxiety, depression, they're on pharmaceuticals. We work with their doctors, they work with their doctors, but a lot of them choose to reduce those amounts. And what they're getting is needing to be flushed out of their system, and we see tremendous flushing with this water. Due to the logarithmic pH scale, a small change in pH has a large effect on the ability to detox. So we're dealing with pesticide. I've had people in the program that were pesticide poisoned in the womb, um, people that have been on drugs and were having to detox the drugs, alcohol, um, things like carcinogens, and then a lot of neurotoxins come to us because they create very severe brain damage. Alkalizing during the detoxification is more and most important because the detox, when you're detoxing, you're actually, it's acid in the cells. And so you've got to flush that out. And detox creates low energy. It's like when you get the flu, I don't feel too good. So the water, as it's flushing it out, also helps put energy in there. Now let me move into a little segment of what we do with one very important thing. How many of you are flying here? How many of you flew here? Okay, then you need to be aware of this because it's not just a little problem anymore. It's called aerotoxic syndrome. And its incidence of contaminated air on aircrafts are reported by hundreds of pilots and air, air people. And the toxic fumes coming from the engines is called aerotoxic syndrome. It's not just the pilots, it's the cabin crew and the passengers. And they're finding now that over 200,000 passengers and crew are getting poisoned with this neurotoxin. This is a pilot on one of the um, big airlines in the United States. She was poisoned and her entire crew and the passengers, only they don't know it. And that crew, most of them have not gone back to work. She came to our program. She had no balance. You see her walking on the left side without anything. She's walking on the floor and she's wobbling. Then we had her, after her brain was reconnecting circuits, she could walk back and forth on a balance board and it's very unstable with no problem at all. And then the neurotoxins coming from flying is coming because it's getting into the cabin and out of the engine and it's cooled and the fumes enter the cabin. If you've ever smelled smelly socks, this is one of the absolute pinpoint you're getting that neurotoxin. Engine oil or hydraulic fuel leaks cause toxic chemicals to contaminate the air supply. And this contamination, one of the names, the big one that causes a lot of the neurotoxic damage is called TCP. It's an organophosphate and there's other ones as well, but it causes, and Denise, our pilot who had this, was serious respiratory problems, memory issues, neurological problems, and severe brain damage. She couldn't go back to work. Here's some of the signs that a lot of them are having. Asthma, fatigue, balance, blurred vision, coughs, confusion, cognitive problems, diarrhea, you feel intoxicated, headaches, increased heart rate, loss of balance or vertigo, light-headedness, dizziness, loss of concentration, loss of consciousness, um, memory loss, uh, nausea, personality change, respiratory failure, seizures, shaking, tremors, tightness in the chest, tingling, tinnitus, and vomiting. And um, some of these people are having to use a lot of the um, asthma respirators, inhalers, and Denise was on one of those, and we were able to find that actually there was some mercury in it. So every time she was using it, it was giving her mercury um, resonance. Um, this is when she came in as a pretest. You can see 
the brain doesn't know what to do. Um, doesn't know what to do with the legs. Watch the difference on the right. You can see the arms know what to do now, and the legs know what to do, and there's a difference without telling her. We just told the brain how to fix those pathways, and that's one of the ways that we can see it's being fixed. So detoxification is one of the really key and central things that we need to do in our program, because we've got to move, we move that TCP out of her, and she would have sessions on the light and, and things that we would do to move those toxins, and she would feel that in her kidneys, she would drink a glass of the alkaline water and instantly she would feel better. So all of our modalities, the light, sound, the motion, the neural reflex, the homeopathics, the metal detox, the essential oils, the emotional clearings that we do, the neural massage, the strict dietary changes, and the trampoline exercises are all moving toxins out of the body. And so we want something that's gonna grab this. And this is why we didn't have this in the beginning when we started the program. And so it really helped our participants once we were able to offer this water. It improved efficient detoxification from the alkaline ionized microclustered water. So they didn't have healing crisis. They didn't have to miss a day. We do not have people miss. Nobody has ever tried this. What we do in our center, we do about 15 modalities. Nobody has ever dared do this. And we monitor them hourly and make sure they're detoxing within safe realms and that everything is safe. And we can dump, as we did in Denise, her entire load of TCP neurotoxin. Once we get the toxin out, then we've got to rebuild the pathway. See, it's not just enough to move the stuff out. You've got to come in and reconnect the pathways that have been broken and damaged, and we do that through all these modalities. Nothing supports the body's cleansing and elimination like the right kind of water. Water is gonna hydrate the blood and the lymph if you know how important the lymph is so you don't get colds and flus and congestion, so you can detox the pathways rapidly. When the quality and efficiency of the water is um, improved, then detoxification pathways function and move more efficiently and toxins can be eliminated on a very timely basis. Another issue that people do not realize is inflammation control. Alkaline ionized water provides free radical scavengers with significantly reduced brain and body inflammation. The brain needs very high levels of anti-inflammatory ox uh, antioxidants, and brain inflammation is a very critical issue. People do not realize that chronic brain inflammation may significantly contribute to brain and neurological issues. Let me give you uh, um, an example. I had, um, have conversations with people all the time and they say, you know, my wife says I'm ADD, my wife says I'm yada yada, and they're always looking for a label. And I go, I don't care what your label is, let's find where it started, where's the cause? Were you a, a twin? Were you adopted? Did you have a fall? Did you have a traumatic birth? Did you have an incident somewhere? Oh yeah, I had a car accident back here three, four years ago. And from that point on, I started having this and that, and you know, when were you diagnosed with this? And they'll usually be able to tell there was an incident. They came back from war. A lot of war veterans have this. And what's happened is the event has left inflammation in the brain. And because they're walking, talking, and moving around, you're thinking, they're thinking, you're thinking, what the world is wrong with you? You know, let's just find something. And so that's where we go to drugs or we try other things. And it doesn't do anything with the inflammation. In America today, there's an estimated, per research, 40 million who suffer from depression or anxiety. And they are finding evidence that the primary cause is a low-grade, chronic brain inflammation. Folks, I've seen people with brain inflammation. For example, the autistics, they all have documented brain inflammation. And it can go for years, and you've got to stop that brain inflammation. When you stop that brain inflammation, you get behavior changes. You get changes in the brain because the inflammation is going to cause further degeneration. So you'll talk about and you'll look at people and people that you know, are you getting worse? Yes, why are you getting worse? Because the inflammation is creating more death to the brain cells. And uh, you'll see with these kind of things that are um, expressions of inflammation, Parkinson's, chronic fatigue, Alzheimer's, and all the brain um, symptoms and all the brain names that you can find out there. Other possible causes of brain inflammation could be premature birth or if the mom had a fever in uh, utero. 
um, bombs. Oh, I have a real heart for our military. How many of you have military people that you really are having a heart for and they're suffering? A lot of our military people are suffering and they're thinking there's no more hope, there's no more help. I don't know where to go. And folks, the government doesn't know what to do. They're struggling too to find help for these guys. But if you can um, stop that inflammation, you can help them. And then we need to recircuit the pathways that have been injured by either a traumatic event or a bomb or an accident or injury. Then we have people that have horseback rides, uh, a car accident, they had a fall, something hit them in the head. And there is a plethora of these that are acute and chronic traumatic brain injuries where people are walking around, they're working, and they're having um, very severe issues. And sometimes they can fake it around others, but their family knows they're not right. And this is because there's inflammation and there's some damage in the brain. Toxic exposures. You can be pesticide in your backyard and get a toxic exposure for you. Maybe you had a previous event that opened the blood-brain barrier and now you're very susceptible to more chemical poisoning and that can cause damage in the neurological pathways that aren't just going to go away. And then, of course, I told you the um, neurotoxins that you can get not just from airplanes. You can get them drinking and eating certain foods. Um, low glutathione. Glutathione is the number one antioxidant in the body. It is 5,000 times stronger than any other antioxidant. It's very important for brain health. And then vaccinations have been known to cause uh, inflammation. But once there's inflammation in the brain, then it's easier to develop something else. And I already told you, Alzheimer's, autism, attention deficit, diabetes, autoimmune problems, obesity, trauma, exposure. I told you when the blood-brain barrier is compromised, you're like an open sieve. The parents of autistic children will say, oh, my kid, just I just keep dumping and I keep doing all these chelations for mercury. And I said, you've got to close the blood-brain barrier. And people don't know how to do this. We do it through energetic means, alternative means, a lot with essential oils and, and things like that. And it seals that blood-brain barrier and reproduces new pathways in the brain. Um, antioxidants is another thing that can help reduce brain inflammation. And where do we get it in our program? We get it with alkaline ionized water. That's extremely potent antioxidant. Alkaline ionized water has an ORP between minus 300 and 800, depending on your source water. And drinking this alkaline antioxidant water on a regular basis can help assist the body to reduce the inflammation, pain, and other things that are free radical damage caused. It's the easiest way to provide an antioxidant. I look at how many times a day, try to drink a gallon plus a day, I'm just flushing antioxidants out of my body because we are, if we have a toxic thought, folks, we're producing uh, free radicals. If we have a stressful day, we just think it's food and water and air. And if you live in LA or so, certain other cities, you know, you have a lot of pollution, you're getting a lot more free radicals. So inflammation is causing these, and why is alkaline water so effective against them? because of its high ORP and because it attracts them and it puts them out, neutralizes it and will reduce the inflammation in the body. So the free radical scavenging is huge. You've heard about it, you keep hearing about it. An alkaline ionized water acts as an antioxidant and a free radical scavenger. Another reason why we want to use the water in our program is because a lot of issues are acid and a lot of brain issues are acid because alkaline water will raise the pH when it's drunk in the body. And it dissolves accumulated acid waste. And the brain acidosis per research can be related to anxiety, depression, stress, nervous tension. You can take your own pH in the urine with a pH strip and you can see when you're under stress, you will have acid urine. And you could be eating a, a really good diet. That's an alkaline diet, but if you have stress, you're gonna produce, if you have anxiety, fear, you're gonna be producing acid in your, and it will show in your urine pH. But alkaline water will stop, per research, the death of brain cells when the body or the brain is too acid, which to me is a phenomenal factor. Now, another factor we have is brain oxygenation and alkaline ionized water. Oxygen, you know how important. Hold your breath. How long can you do it? Not very long. And what happens? You start getting brain cell damage. And so we want those that have brain cell damage already to have more oxygen to help carry 
the movement therapies and the things that we do further. And it carries acid waste away from the brain. It's vital for the brain and the body health and the most important nutrient in the brain. So we're dealing with oxygen and water. What are they? The two most important nutrients in our brain and our body. And it increases the level of oxygen in the brain very, very quickly. All brain problems, oh, and I should say all brains, need more oxygen. And how many here don't have a brain? Oh, I thought so. Okay, good. We're safe. As the pH increases, so does the predominance of the negative or the hydroxyl ions. Drinking alkaline water means more oxygen. Not in the form of the O2, but it's in the form of the OH, which is the hydroxyl ion, which is a stabilized because it's combined with an alkaline mineral. So once it's inside your body, you have two hydroxyl ions, which can form the water molecule and then give off an oxygen atom. In this way, the alkaline mineral is used to neutralize acid, and the hydroxyl ion is free to supply oxygen. Isn't that genius? I think it's amazing how that works. Then we have... <laughs> DNA repair. Of course, when there's brain injury, brain damage, there's going to be DNA damage. So what we're doing is not, not making DNA repair. We're supporting what happens naturally in the program when we see um, people's functions change. It's going to be affecting the DNA. And research tells us that alkaline ionized water protects and prevents DNA damage. So we want to send them home with this water, and we want to make sure they continue on it. Alkaline ionized water can protect the toxic effects of free radicals. They can cause DNA damage, and it provides the increased antioxidant effects. This is a really amazing story of this young man. This was Stace. An adult, all he could do was work at a, a grocery store stocking shelves. And his dad's goal for him in life was to have him cared for and taken care of because there was no hope. He'd gone through the school system. He'd gone through whatever. He didn't really have a label on it, but he couldn't function. He couldn't carry on a conversation. He couldn't self-care. He couldn't drive. He couldn't go to school. He couldn't function. So he came to our program. He actually came about three times, and um, he was amazing. You see him here trying to get the, the connection between the different pathways in the brain, and once he gets them, they're, they're flowing. And it was very important for him to have the alkaline ionized water because it would help him be able to, number one, get the oxygen to the brain, catch the new connections that were being made. But today, he's in college. He's getting A's and B's. He's got a girlfriend. He's driving, and he's functioning as an autonomous young man and he, it, it's just a miracle, and his parents are thrilled. And he can, I remember times in the program where we would just do rote, ask me a question, who, what, where, why, how. I had to just retrain him and train him how to, how to have a conversation. And the next year when he came, he was going to all the new people having conversations. It, through the year, it continues to improve. Our program does not regress. It continues to add during the year with whatever they do. And if, if they do little, it, it, it'll still keep improving. So a summary of why we use alkaline ionized microclustered hexagonal water in our camp and why it's so important. Because the exercises we do, they would be rigorous for you. And they would be intense for any of you. Good sleep is essential. We want them to be fully hydrated so they get good sleep. Many of them, I would say 99% of them, are so very low in energy. So we need a way to up that energy. Many of them, if not most, are severely dehydrated, especially when they get there from the travel to get there. And many of them have never experienced oxygenated, energized water. And the brain, remember, is 80% water, and it needs the maximum hydration to facilitate and make those new brain connections. Six hours of brain therapy a day means a lot of energy. Water is a single greatest source of energy in the body. It's movement in and out of the cells produces a amount of energy. Th guys, this is important about the water. That water has electricity. It has energy that you can't see and you can't prove. And that's why one of the first signs of uh, dehydration is fatigue because there's no energy moving in and out of the cells. Intense therapy means you need intense help for them. 
Here, if you're paralyzed and you're down there crawling, do you think that's going to take every bit of energy in your cells? You better believe it. If you're autistic and you're stiff and you're rigid and you're um, defiant and um, you don't think that's going to take a lot of energy for mom and the staff to get that person to do that, that's why the staff and the parents drink it too. Here's Erin. She's another one of our stars. She would do two hours of trampoline a day. She came to us. She had never run in her life and zero energy. And her recovery from her severe Asperger's was spectacular. She's this 26-year-old who now can carry on a conversation. She can initiate conversations. She can take care of herself. I mean, she sat on the couch every day and just was... Oh, I don't like my life. I don't like myself. And these, these, they're, they're aware enough to know that something's wrong, but they didn't know what to do. And she's just amazing, too, today. <laughs> Signs of dehydration with fatigue, brain fog, anger, blood sugar swings, moodiness, pain, premature aging, memory loss, and high blood pressure. All of these are triggers. Many autistics, learning disabled, any, any issue that's come, brain injured, they drink little or no water. What are they going to do? They're going to do sodas and juice and coffee and these drinks. The, this accentuates their inability to think and function normally. And then for many of our participants, they've never in their lives, I mean, I actually have people that have never even drank a glass of water because they're obstinate and they don't want to and the parents don't realize the importance of it. Chronic dehydration results because the necessary amounts aren't taken in every day. And to make matters worse, then they're drinking mostly juice or um, things that are more dehydrating, like sodas or caffeinated drink or sugar or alcohol. And then these substances cause a net loss rather than a gain of water in the body. And those who regularly drink these things are actually drinking themselves dry, so we're getting the brains getting less and less. Now, another thing we use in our camp is brain... Um, we use the water for cooking. And this is an awesome thing. You take the 11.5 pH water and we soak chicken in it. And you can actually make chicken broth with one um, neck. It'll make a quart of chicken broth. Absolutely the most delicious. And you just leave it there five to ten minutes. It makes your fruits and vegetables taste better, last longer. And the cooking time is a lot less. Then we use the strong acid water to kill the um, mold and bacteria. It helps retain its color and boy does it last a lot longer. Alkaline water we use in juices, frozen juices that are organic and help to make it with an 8.5 pH. And we do everything from scratch and so we make our own beans. But to make a complete protein we sprout them. And I've never before seen this. We put them in 11.5 water and five hours later, normally it takes three days, we get a shoot on it, a, a long shoot. Absolutely amazing. Completed the protein. Another thing that we do is we have a garden and we like to store some of our food so we take homegrown um, onions and they're soaked in the 2.5 water. They kill the mold, the bacteria, the fungus and then they're dried. And guess what? They taste better and they store longer in storage. Then we used it in our laundry. We had a young lady who had such poor digestion she could not digest the omega oils that we did so she had an accident on the bedding. We had washed it and tried to get the smell and you know how fish smells. There was no way that blanket was going back on anybody's bed. So we said, I got an idea. Let's put it in the 11.5 water. So we took the portion of the blanket, soaked it in there for an hour or so, came out smelling like it had been in the sun, just as fresh as could be. It was amazing. Now, quickly, we're going to show you the results by increasing all the things that we're doing, but um, undergirding it with the ability of the ionized water, the alkaline water, to get in there. Uh, Yuan came to us. She had, had a brain tumor in her cerebellum, left her paralyzed on her left side, left her in a wheelchair. After 12 days, her vision returned so she could actually read out of her left eye. Her sensation in her tongue was returning so she could begin to eat. Her muscle movement greatly um, improved on her left, and she actually was able to stand and uh, do her own grooming. Here she comes in the left. She had to have her husband with her at all times, um, helping her, holding her because she could barely move. Then you see her on the right, midway in the program. She's actually moving herself and able to get movement with herself. Now, she came to us, mind you, bedridden. She came to us in a wheelchair. She'd been around the world. She um, is an MD from China, and she'd been everywhere for therapy for nine years. And here we have her on the left. She's now walking on her own with help, somebody near her in the wall. 
And then on the right, she's walking, standing alone with perfect balance with nobody near her. First time in her life. Nine years bedridden in nine days walked. Emily's eyes had never been tracking together before the brain camp, and look at how beautiful they are. Her dad was in tears. Um, Matt, severe OCD, super sensitive to noise, outstanding improvement. And then we had Johnny, severely autistic. I want you to pay attention to the mom and look and see if you see she's rested. These parents, folks, need your help. They need my help. They're exhausted. These kids are so hard to take care of. Watch her when she sits down. And then Johnny on the right, after maybe 10 days, look at her. Phew. Oh, I got him in here. Grandpa's there to help. We didn't need anybody there. He was obeying. He wouldn't run away. He was starting to eat properly. He was putting a puzzle together in the right place per my instructions with nobody around him. And he has continued to grow. And his um, doctor, neurologist, said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because this is amazing. So where would you go in conclusion? If you had a choice, would you spend thousands of dollars on expert therapy all over the world like you and her family did with unknown results? Would you endure hundreds of hours of therapy with minimal results like's happening in our, I'm sorry, school system? Would you take multiple drugs trying to solve the problems, masking the real cause? Would you just feel hopeless and helpless or would you want to spend 12 days drinking alkaline water, ionized water, along with targeted proven brain modalities that are changing the brain. <laughs> Jeannie, you saw Jeannie in the beginning and how bad she was. Here she is at the end. She has a smile on her face. Folks, she's getting married. She's living a normal life. No more anxiety, no more depression. She's gone back to life. She is ecstatic. Jason. He changed even by the end of the program. His speech, the biggest thing, is he can now flow with his speech. Can you imagine in 12 days? <laughs> to, hi, how are you? I mean, amazing. This was one of the most exciting for me. A vet could not see out of her right eye because of the optic nerve damage. We did tons of programs on the optic nerve with the light. And she got vision in that eye, her facial structure changed, and she had her balance. She was able to, to move and run and walk and do the trampoline like no, nowhere had she before. And her self-confidence returned. And then our little Chloe, she got the right side. Can you imagine? One half of the brain was gone, and we got function on the right side. And she today is moving up the ladder and getting more and more functions. She was able to balance. She's now more motivated and initiating. Now our little autistic girl, Elsa, very severely temper tantrums and, you know, the whole behavior of digestive upsets, crying all the time, screaming all the time. By about the ninth, tenth day, she was Miss Normal. She was running into everybody's arms, loving on everybody, behaving. Um, the digestive system had cleared. She was acting normal. One of the main foundations, it's not the only thing, but the alkaline microclustered ionized hexagonal water is what we use to help these people to get these kind of results. This is our staff, and of course, we understand the importance of drinking a lot of it, so our staff likes to drink it in big mounts. And, uh, <laughs> so that's it. I will be available in the back and have resources available for those that want it. Dr. Allen has gone beyond her doctorate in nutrition to find answers for her clients' brain issues when nutrition isn't enough. She had vast training in neurodevelopmental therapy, neurokinesiology, brain reflexes, light and sound therapy, and brain stimulation techniques. Dr. Allen's personal challenge was to help her daughter, who was brain injured from asphyxiation. Both daughters today are functioning well emotionally, socially, and academically. She now offers other families the kind of life-changing information and care she so desperately needed for her own children. Dr. Allen's vast experience includes nutrition, allergy balancing, 
neuro-emotional release, essential oils, total body modification, homeopathy, magnetic and electromagnetic balancing, herbs, nutritional supplements, quantum energetic techniques for brain and body health, light and sound therapy, auditory integration training, neurokinesiology, and neurodevelopment brain re-education. She has developed a brain program called the Allen Method, which facilitates the connection of neurological pathways which are injured, damaged, missing, or not working properly. Through the Advanced Learning and Development Institute, individuals can participate in Dr. Allen's life-changing brain camps and home programs. Through this alternative brain developmental technology, many adults and children are finding hope and success with their brain, behavior, and health issues. For more information, contact Dr. Kareen Allen, Advanced Learning and Development Institute. The phone number is 866-81-BRAIN. Our website is www.brainadvance.org or send us an email, brainadvance at gmail.com.